It's Monday. We got to crush Mondays. Uh, it's well, crushing hey, me. That's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Darn Mondays. Hey, sincere. What's going on? Am I the first one? <laughs> Mute us. There we go. Nice. Yes, nice. Dave. I, I don't know. I don't know if you're first or not. What is going on? What's going on, Victor, Frankie, Dave? You guys catch the solar eclipse, there, buddy. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good, Frankie. My left eye hurts. Well, other than that, <laughs> I'm doing Dang. okay. Danny stared into the sun. I stared into the sun, and my my Asian eyes did not help me. <laughs> oh what, man! What's what setup? What setup were you guys uh, shooting? Are you asking me? Are you you're asking the crew out there? Oh, no, I'm me? asking. I'm asking you. What what setup were you shooting for the eclipse? So get this right. So in the morning. I'm like, okay. I wasn't sure if I was going to shoot it or not because I saw that video of somebody with their DSLR and their DSLR sensor like completely was destroyed and the camera went on fire. Oh, yeah, the Canon? Yeah, 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 like their Rebel camera. And so this morning I was contemplating whether or not I wanted my Sony camera to light on fire because I didn't <laughs> get a solar filter. I was like, you know, my student, because I because I have class at ten twenty two or something around that time when the eclipse happened. I was like, "Well, I'll get something for the kids. I'll I'll do this for them. You know, I'll I'll for the possibly kids. I'll possibly sacrifice my. A I was gonna put my A six thousand out there first. I was like, Nah, we'll get the A sixty five hundred. We're gonna go all in with the A sixty five hundred. So I get my seventy two hundred. I pack it up and I'm like, Okay, I'm gonna I need my two X teleconverter. I leave. I I forgot my HDMI cable, so I come back because I needed to, I drove back. I wasn't that far up, I'm like a minute away. And I leave, and I'm on the freeway heading this to work already, and I realized I forgot the 2X teleconverter. I was like, oh. So I forgot the 2X teleconverter, and I said, okay, think, 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 what else can I do? Okay, I'm using APS-C, and I said, oh, I can use the, um, the what is it when you zoom in? Clear image zoom, right? I, was, I wasn't going to take a picture. I was going to record video so the kids can see the video footage of it. Because we can't look. We I, I was not allowed to take the students out directly to look unless we had proper um, where uh, like proper eyepiece or whatever for it. And we didn't have it. Um, and so I told the kids, I was like, hey, you know what? We will still try and see part of the eclipse. I'll have my laptop set up in the shade, and I'll set my camera up. So I was using the Alpha 6500. 7200 and I was using clear image zoom and I stacked two variable MD filters on it and I was like man there's a really good chance I'm gonna fry the sensor and I was like contemplating my head man I'm gonna fry this thing and so I was like whatever let's just go for it so I connected it with the capture card OBS so the kids could see the laptop screen connected to the to the 6500 and I was covering I was actually covering the uh, the lens with something ahead of time. I wasn't letting it see, I only let it see the sunlight for like, I don't know, about 10 minutes total or so because I was trying to avoid any damage or long-term damage or damage to the, the sensor. But yeah, that's what we did. Um, it wasn't that great. One of the science teachers came by and he brought some like actual glasses. And so the kids got to use it really quick and check out the solar eclipse. So it was pretty cool. It just sucked. It was like, you think it? Uh, you would think it was gonna like block out the entire sun, but obviously it was it was a partial. Yeah, because where where we're at, we're not getting the full totality of it. Exactly. So maybe the next time, the next one around, we'll see. I actually forgot today was solar eclipse, so I went out for my morning walk, and I was like, "Oh man, today is, <laughs> what a great day today! It's not too hot, it's not too hot. man. It's actually kind of chilly today, you know." Feeling good. Today's uh, today's off to a good day, and then like I, <laughs> after the towards the end of my walk, I see like uh, a couple of a uh, couple of old people, um, a couple of seniors out, outside of their senior homes holding up their iPads towards the sun, and I was like, well, "What's going on today? Huh? It's just, it's just something something happening in the sky?" And then I was like, I looked into the sun a bit. I was like, "Oh crap! Today's a solar eclipse." So I ran home and turned on the news and enjoy the solar eclipse through the comforts and safety of my own home. 
I, I was like, I, at first, I was like, why are why are some of these like YouTube live channels like only showing like a video of crowds just just standing around? I want to see the sun, but then I, I I realized that not a lot of places have like there's only certain what only certain states have the full totality. Like places yeah. like New York wouldn't have it. So I was watching like New York streams. So I was like, okay, well, this is a total bust. Oh man, oh yeah. man, but definitely. <laughs> The kids weren't all that uh, that impressed. They're like, "Oh, oh, that's it. Okay." <laughs> if you got wow. to look, through, if you got to look through it to the goggles, it was pretty. I mean, it's nice. You can you can actually see it. But other yeah. than that, it was like maybe you had maybe you had to really experience it, like go to Oregon or yeah. Idaho to experience. Yeah, one of our one of our teachers, I think, actually had went out there to go check it out. Wow. Um, but I was like, I should have took a trip out there. Oh, well, next time it happens, maybe in what? 20, I don't know when the next 2024. April 2024. Really? Man, I'm going to be an old person then. Too old, too old for the solar eclipse. How long is that? That's going to be three. They're probably laughing at us right now. They're going to say old. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. That's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> that's going to be seven years from now. Wait, we'll be your age when it's going to happen again. I'll be like 36, 37. Damn. One million subscribers by then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe YouTube. YouTube probably wouldn't exist by then. You're like a million subscribers with like nobody watching. Oh, that'd be terrible. That'd be so bad. <laughs> We're still on the pre-show, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Forgot to mention that. We are on the pre-show. <laughs> yes. Someone did mention there was like a dislike. So do us a favor and give this video like. One million likes. Horrible red redness of the negative bar. <laughs> Frankie's not getting any sound. Jason, you can hear me, right? I can. At first, I didn't know. I think I think everyone can hear us. I think I think we're good, right? Everybody, we're good. I I, I hope. Huh. Hey, Pat. <laughs> hey, hey, Kevin, what's going on? Oh. Dave sincere says Danny looks good to be broadcasting from Mars. That's Apollo thirteen launch video quality. <laughs> yes, I was now, just trying to save Paul. some bandwidth. I was just trying to save some bandwidth for the show. Maybe dark in my room. It looks dark. Um, Richard, what's up? What's going on, Richard? I wouldn't mind a 2470 Zoom. I could have a small profile with Sony RXV offers for my A6500. Good stuff. Jim P says, hey, guys, I saw a total Mitsubishi Eclipse. No filters needed. <laughs> what? Uh, I guess that's uh, one, of the, one of the models of the Mitsubishi cars. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Oh, that's terrible. You saw a total... Oh, there was a car accident? Man, that's terrible, Jim. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, seven years, seven years. Chuck says, definitely flying out to Texas 2024. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I should. we should try to make it out and go. I know, right? Um, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, for sure, man. In seven years, we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. Wajit says, what's wrong with Sony? Why are they taking so long to upgrade the A7 series? Well, Wajit, if you, ha if you didn't know, I think, what, two was it two years ago, Danny, that Japan was hit by a major, major, major earthquake? And it completely I, wrecked their factory? Yeah, definitely. I'm pretty sure that definitely did a big slowdown on their part, but um, with their fabrication process. So, I don't know. I... It's not like it's urgent or anything. I mean, in my in my opinion, well, right now it sucks because the A9 is really like your only option if you wanted something that was fresh, brand new, new autofocusing system. So I definitely know why people are angsty about the A7 Mark III. Mm -hmm. So I understand. Awesome. Guys, it is 7 o'clock. Welcome back to another Monday Night Live with me and Danny, a.k.a. that one camera guy. <laughs> Woo. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your Monday Night Live with us. And hopefully everybody had a good time with the solar eclipse and, and are not blind like Danny is right now. Oh, my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, so, do I need solar eclipse glasses to watch through my TV? I'm not sure. I wasn't, wasn't too sure if the effects would go through digitally. Oh. <laughs> 
But as always, we like to start the show with new gear. We want you guys to share what new piece of gear you got over the week. Uh, use the hashtag new gear to let us know, and we'll read your gear out loud. Danny, while you still have one eyesight left, what did you get? <laughs> <laughs> uh, really quick, again, for those of you that are just jumping in, yeah. So we're trying to do really quick um, record the solar eclipse, and I was trying to get a little feed for my students to see. So I was looking through the EVF to correct the view because I could barely see the back of the screen on the Sony Alpha 6500 because the Alpha 6500 screen, when you're in 4K, does not get bright. <laughs> so I had to shove my eyeball into the EVF. Thank you, Sony. So I had to shove my eyeball in there to readjust the camera because the sun was moving. And I was I kept my eye on there for about 10 seconds, and now it kind of hurts a little bit. But anyway, so Sony, Next, the next one, Alpha 6700, get it fixed. All right. All right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Hashtag new gear. So I, 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 I don't know if you know already, but I am a teacher. I, we just started back up. School started again last week on Wednesday officially, but I've been back to work since Monday. And so it's been really busy the first few days. It's usually really tough on the first few days of school. Got a lot of things to go through, procedures, routines with the students. So I've been pretty busy. Um, what's kind of sad is that I got a new Pelican SKG case that came in to hold um, to hold my lenses because I usually just have my lenses chilling over here on the side. I don't know if you can see it. They're just like there. Um, and I put them away somewhere else, but I'd rather just have one case that can hold most of them in. And so I went ahead and ordered this SKG Pelican case. I, I don't know what the heck it's called. I don't even know what it looks like anymore because it's been so long since I ordered it. But anyway, it's still in its box. And then I ordered a DJI Mavic Pro, which I was hoping to possibly use over the weekend, but again, kind of busy. And so it's still in its box. Wonderful. And so uh, hopefully this coming, well, I can't even, I don't know if I'm going to have time this coming weekend because Manny Ortiz, I was going to go to Manny's workshop on Saturday. Maybe Sunday, maybe a little bit of time. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's what I have with me right now. As far as new gear, that's my current situation. Jason. Cool. Uh, for those of you guys who know, Danny just uh, pointed out that Manny Ortiz, the uh, ever popular Sony portrait photographer, is having a portrait workshop in Los Angeles. Is it, is it Pasadena or Los Angeles? The Los Angeles Sammy, I believe. Los Angeles Sammy. So if you guys are in the LA area, uh, specifically West Hollywood area, uh, Manny and also Sony artist and Scott Robert Lim will be hosting a workshop. So if you're a fan of their work and you want to learn how they do their portrait photography, go check them out. It's this weekend, Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday? Friday, Saturday. Friday, yeah. Saturday. So uh, we'll have more information. I'll I'll try to post. I'll try to remember to post the link in the description box below later. Or yeah, yeah. I, I, I SammyPhotoSchool.com so or something. Yeah, definitely can't make it to the Friday, but I'll be there on Saturday if you're planning to go. So uh, anybody out there, I will be there. So Danny's crashing the party on Saturday, so I'll be sure to go on Saturday. <laughs> I unfortunately will not be able to make it. <laughs> Flying to SF this weekend for a wedding. Okay, so as for me, uh, I also have an unopened box. Uh, I <laughs> pre-ordered the Rode Video Mic. No, so really? You what? did? I did, I did. I pre-ordered it, oh. and it got here sitting in the box right now in the corner right over there. I haven't uh, opened live, it. Live unboxing. Do live it. Live unboxing. <laughs> no. Maybe we have enough time today. Sure, why not? I was just, I was just kind of yeah, trying, just trying to save it for like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't save know. it for a video, man. You, 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 you got to save the content, man. Hey, save the, the struggle content. is real. Actually, I, I, <laughs> I thought it wasn't gonna even going to come make it this month because like, I got an email that says, oh, yeah, I saw your items in back order. I was like, oh, okay. And then like two days later, it was like, your item has shipped. And I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> so I pretty much got it around the same time as everyone so you, else did, but I just didn't get a chance. So this this is the new one, right? The new the new this, one? This is the brand new one. This is the one where if you forget to turn on your mic, you turn on the camera, it would trigger the mic to turn on. Insanely useful because we always forget to turn on. <laughs> Here, the, the thing <laughs> the is, mic. I love what they did. Like I love what they did with it. I love that they improved the battery door location. I got used to the old one. You know, we have a bunch in my class, so I got so used to opening that darn battery door, which I really hated. But the thing is, that Rode video mic is massive. It's not. It's not very friendly for travel. Well, yeah. Or I would just say, like, just putting into a tight compact area. 
Mm -hmm. That's the only caveat I have about that microphone. Yeah, it's bigger yeah. and it's thicker. I took it there. The wind, because the wind, the windscreen, that wind foam is is massive. It's it takes up a lot more space. It, so, so that 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 means in theory you can take it out. And that replace is true. It. You could probably take it out, or even just squish it somewhere. Squish it somewhere. Yeah, we'll see. We'll find out. Tune in. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already <laughs> yet for the uh, Road Video Micro Pro Plus unboxing. <laughs> Um, let's see what else is here. So if you guys have been watching my, uh, vlogs, um, got Final Cut Pro 10, finally. Uh, you guys, if you guys, uh, have just been tuning in, um, been using Final Cut for 30 days on trial. I finally decided to get it because it is a lot more optimized on, uh, the Mac. And I exported one of my vlogs yesterday. It was a nine minute vlog and it came out in like, maybe like eight minutes. I exported the video in like eight minutes, 4K, color graded and everything. Whereas if I were to export that same file on Premiere, it would have taken me like 45 minutes to an hour. So it nice. was just, it was just such a nice change because it, after it was exported, like I, I was working on my thumbnail and everything. And once it was done, my thumbnail was ready. Like I was able to upload it. Whereas before I would like spend the time to upload, work on my thumbnail and just like sit there for like another 40 minutes before I can actually publish it to YouTube. So it's pretty nice. And then that's awesome. <laughs> and then subsequently following that, I got the new MacBook Pro 2017, mid 2017 specced out, not technically specced out because someone did point out that, uh, I, I got the one terabyte instead of the two terabyte version, but oh, okay, okay, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not specked out, I guess. Close enough. That's still pretty darn good. That's yeah, still one, pretty darn good. One terabyte's pretty massive, so yeah. How's the touch bar for you so far? Um, I honestly have not been using it, um, only because <laughs> like I'm I'm using Google Chrome, which like does nothing. Yeah. Um, I think I need to like switch to Safari in order to get the um, the full effect. Uh, I tried sending out some emojis through uh, iMessage. That's pretty cool. That's, that's actually pretty freaking useful. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, um, I I probably still need to like try it out some more. Uh, maybe start editing with with uh, Final Cut with it. Um, just the laptop. Like your major laptop. projects. Because actually, I didn't I didn't I wasn't editing with just the laptop because I have it connected to like an external monitor a Wacom mm -hmm. tablet and a keyboard. So there was no need for me to actually reach over and hit the touch bar, so. Yeah, you know what, I, I am very interested of trying that out. I'm, I'm actually very, uh, I wanted to try out just go pure Mac for a little bit and just try with Final Cut. I mean, I have like the MacBook Pro 13 inch Retina, like the 2013 model, no, was 2014, I don't know, one of those, mm -hmm. but. I've just wanted to try and just use Final Cut for a little bit, just to learn it. I'm not trying to transition to it; just curious to see how well it would work out. But yeah. how, do you know, like battery life wise, how that's going for you? No, it's it's been plugged in for me. So once I take it to Europe, we'll see. Because we'll I'm see. interested in that. So yeah. if, like you edit your project and you're able to keep your, it doesn't drain the battery life too much to get a little project done. That'd be pretty awesome. That'd be pretty so. cool. But, but then again, I'm editing in 4K, so we'll see. Dong dongle life just sucks. Oh. Or just having to carry just one adapt. I don't think it's to be too bad eventually. No. We are. I got two. I got two. So one one stays at home and one kind of comes with me for travel. So I'll definitely talk more about that very soon. All right. Let's jump into the chat. Okay. Let's see what's going on with the hashtag new gear or new gear. Uh, let's see here. Dave Sincere says, new gear, fellas. I pulled the trigger on the Sekonic 858 light meter. 600 bucks. Holy smokes. Dave. Dave oh Sincere. God. That's a lens. That is, that is <laughs> Sony 18105F4 lens right there, man. I mean, but if he I, needs it, I mean, sure. I, just, I mean, I, I, I have the, um, the Lumu light meter that I still... Need to tinker with some more, and that's that. That itself is already three hundred bucks. So, woo, that's insane. Oh man, Let's see here. All right, let me jump to the next one. Damon Hart says, "Man, Frodo, be free, be free, tripod." Woo, good stuff. You know, I, you know, I'll be honest. I just when I got to see it at was it Cinegear that we had gone to? Was yeah, Cinegear. Yeah, I 
I, I wasn't all too impressed. But then again, I mean, if you want like a light video tripod slash hybrid, I think it works. I, I guess I was just expecting too much from it. It's got to keep it reasonable, like what's meant to do. Yeah, I'm bringing actually two be free tripods to me with uh, to me to Europe because there's no way I can bring the the heavy sturdier tripod. So having two be frees is nice. I just need them for stability and one actual regular size Manfrotto tripod with a fluid head. So should be good. All right. Uh, let's see here. Marty the Mo says I traded my A7R2 for the A9 last week. Amazing autofocus. Especially with the native lens. Oh, did the trade? Was that the trade up program? That's oh, the, Marty. That's the trade up program. How much did oh. you get for your A7R2 and where did you trade it? Let us know. $2. $2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to fall in love with that A9 so fast. Um, Unknown Jones also picked up a lightweight Manfrotto tripod. I wonder if that's the B free as well. Nice. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Chris Mega Game says Sony Zeiss fifty five one eight finally came in the mail. Nah, gonna enjoy that lens. I, I watched one of Chris Mega Game's video and woo that that green screen that green screen portion of his video smooth and crisp, smooth and crisp. <laughs> Mark K says he sold the 24 to 70 G Master and picked up the 16 to 35 G Master Ooh. with the Zeiss 50 millimeter 1.4. Nice. Wow. Let us know what was the thinking behind that. Why did you why did you decide to sell your 24 to 70 to get the 16 to 35 and the 50? Let us know. I mean, I feel like it kind of it might cover some of the range that Mark's probably looking for. You know, um, probably just wanted a faster prime. Maybe I don't know. We'll see what they say. Chuck says 12 to 24 F4, hashtag new gear. Nice. <sighs> See, I had to send mine back, guys. I, I didn't get to finish a review on it, but I miss it already. Actually, right now, the lens that I'm using right now, I typically will have, like, I had the 12 to 24 before. This is the 12 millimeter F2 from Rokinon. So I'm using that manual focus lens right now for my uh, my setup here on the oh, Alpha nice. 6300. So in case you were wondering, that's the 12 millimeter F2 from Rokinon. Nice. Uh, Am I next? Okay, Jeff Ivory <laughs> says, "What's up, Jason? I'm thinking about buying the new Godox 80." Okay, that's a question. That is a question. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we gotta wait on those. <laughs> open Q and A very soon, guys. Yeah, open your Q and A, and we just got five dollars, five dollars from Marcus Cooper. Okay, we got, we got. Yes. Okay, we we got to check that question though now because Marcus just dropped that on us. <laughs> My A nine gets pretty warm. Is that normal? The overheat symbol did not come on. Warm, Marcus. When I'm using it, when very warm environments though, it's it's normal for me. I'm the Brown says hashtag New Gear finally got the seventy to two hundred. Is that the G Master? It's been lost in the UPS system for nine days. Oh no. <laughs> Oh man, I'm the brown. Contact Enjoy the man. It. Enjoy it. Was there was there even a status update? Like, did it say where it was last was? Or I don't I don't know. It, I hope it's not like oh it's delivered, but you never saw it. That's the worst case scenario. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, was it my turn? Yeah. Jason Sears says, Jason, you'll be in Europe, right? Yes. Uh, Chris Barr says, new gear, Sony 55, 210, new inbox, $150, Facebook Marketplace. Nice. That, that, that's not bad at all. I, I mean, people, it's not the sharpest thing out there, but if you just need something with Zoom, it's it's a good starting place. Oh. Honestly, those kind of lenses make you appreciate the other ones more. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, <laughs> Once you get the better lens, you appreciate that other lens even more. That's how I would have put it. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm lost. I am lost. What is going on here? Uh, hang on, guys. Looking for new gear. Do, 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 Zoom Chris says hi. He got the 90 and a 70 at 200. For for Sony or what? What for are you, food? Was that Fuji now? Right? No. 
Zoom, aren't, aren't you on that Fuji train? <laughs> 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 All right, Mav fan picked up the 85 millimeter f1.8 Batiste and the 24 to 70 G Master. Man, I really want one of those 24 to 70 or the 16 to 35 G Master. I'd probably go with the 24 to 70 G Master. Damn it. Later on, I will wait. I will wait. Dustin Dilworth says, new gear 16 F 2.8 to use on crane. Doesn't balance one. No OSS. Not sure if I if I will keep it. 16. Why, why isn't it balancing well? Is it too light? Is that the AP? That's the APS-C lens, right? That's the APS-C. No? It might be a little too light, but you can still use it with the crane, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. It would just yeah. be a little bit too back heavy, but it should still power on. Uh, Jose Lucha, I will be at the workshop on Saturday to see Manny at the Sammy's camera. Keith Alexander says, "So wait, wait, new Sony APS-C will be with the six. Okay, we're, that's a different topic. Jim P. Photo says, new Nike sneakers. I walk three to five miles per day and wear them out in a hurry. Nice. <laughs> Vex, uh, Vex Vegas says, uh, new Sony 18105, 51.8, and 16.2.8. What a splurge. Nice. Uh, let's see. When did this act like? Uh, shout out to Mark. Uh... Chris Barr, new gear. Wow, he's got a lot of stuff. Okay. SMC Pentax M, 135mm F3.5, and a 50mm F2 manual lens for the Alpha 6500. Both like new for 20 bucks. Great. And argue with that logic. And expensive manual yeah. problem lens is awesome. I'm the Brown. The sender had the, had to open lost request. When I opened the box, it looked like it was under something that never got delivered. What? That's sketchy. I'm the Brown. But please keep us updated. Hope you get your money back, man. That is some crazy, crazy shiz going on. Mark uh, K, yeah. following up on Mark K, says the 2470 G Master was just not that sharp to me, and the two stops of extra light on the 50 uh, fit better. Okay, cool. Nice. Come by, and he has the 85 GM, too. It's nice. all about finding what works for you. Yep. See is, that, is that it? I think that's, that's it. More. We're good. All right. Yeah. That's that, that concludes the new gear portion. And if you guys are just joining us in right now, please give this video a thumbs up. And uh, let's move on to the main topic of today's podcast. So, oh, and again, real quick, we are going to take the Q and A stuff a little later in the show. So just have them primed up and ready. Yeah. So probably not 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So the main topic is uh, rumor has it that Sony is planning. Wait, is it? Are they releasing? Are they announcing? They're announcing an APS-C lens that's a 16 millimeter. Not f2.8, not f2, not f1.8, but an f1.4 for the E mount. It started off as a low scoring rumor on Sony Alpha Rumors, but then it got raised to SR3, which means it's a little higher, it's a little bit more credible. And um, they're saying that this 16 millimeter f1.4 is shaped very similar to the 5518, which is pretty darn cool, which is a good thing. Just a bit longer, which I'm totally cool with. And apparently, retailers already have photos of this lens. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty freaking excited that um, the APS-C line is finally getting a little bit of an update because I know a lot of people out there are just like, hey, what about the APS-C line? Huh? Why are you guys focusing on the uh, full, mount, uh, full frame mounts? What about us uh, APS-C shooters, huh? So <laughs> <laughs> where did that voice come from? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> I think I used that voice in like my A7R2 oh. review video. I'm just like, oh man, that's too funny. We're looking for the APS-C lenses, all right, guys? <laughs> When's Sony going to release it? I uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> and I think the 16 millimeter, that's roughly 24 millimeters on APS-C. Right. So that you, you get an actual effective focal length of 24 millimeters on APS-C with that particular lens, if that does happen to come out. And again, these particular lines of lenses are actually pretty awesome. I mean, you got the, you got, if this comes out, then you had the 24, the 24 millimeter F1.8. And then I guess technically the 55 Zeiss, but that one's full frame. 
So you got some small compact primes that have autofocusing if you need it. I mean, it's more options for people. Yeah, I think I think like what I think that's missing the APS-C from Sony. They're missing like a lot of like the fast aperture ones, right? I mean, like usually they're like f4 or something. So yeah, because right now there is no mo there's no zoom lenses. So if we're if we're gonna talk about the possible lenses for the APS-C, do we want to get to that or a little, a little bit later? Oh, um, let's get into that in, in, in just a bit. But or maybe I'll just finish up what I have to say. So yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, like like Danny says, I'm, it's it's a 24 uh, millimeter effective equivalent to a full frame camera, which I'm pretty excited for because like this is gonna be great for anyone who wants like a wide a little bit of a wide angle lens to fly on the gimbal, and at one f 1.4 you're gonna get some really creamy looking bokeh, and it's gonna be great for vlogging too. I mean, like you can make do with a 24 millimeter focal length to do some some sort some type of vlogging. I don't know. I just I think the price is gonna have to it's it's gonna be expensive. It's gonna like, be expensive. I mean, looking at the current line right now, it's probably going to be at around a thousand bucks. You think so, huh? I, I, I mean, one point four, man, that's going to be even more encouragement for them to charge a premium if it's one point four. Wow, you know, so I'm probably right. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be a unicorn lens, and it's going to be that kind of lens where I think people are looking for APS-C, but they're also looking for cost-effective solutions too. It's right. nice that this might happen, but if it's a thousand U.S. dollars. I feel that you are definitely going to lose a lot of people from that because, again, the people who are buying the the APS-C, they either have A6000s, maybe A6300s, and I don't know. I think it's I think it's going to be great for the option. I just don't know if the price is going to be right, and I have a feeling it's going to be out of the price range of a lot of people right now. So that's the only con I would give that thing. I'm sure it's going to be an excellent lens, sharpness-wise, but we'll see. <laughs> we will see. Um, let's see here. Uh, should we should we hit the comments first, or should we just maybe blaze through the couple of couple of uh, couple of points right here? I mean, we can keep going. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just we'll um, just uh, wrap up this uh, this topic right here. So uh, in addition to that, um, there is a bit of a rumor that Tokina will be releasing two new lenses: a super wide and a fast wide full frame lens. Yeah, these are more for full frame, not APS-C like we talked about earlier, but um, they're releasing two Furin lenses. Is that how you pronounce it, Danny? I hope so. I okay. hope so. We'll be corrected later. It's fine. By the end of 2017. So Tokina is does have some lenses for the E-mount, if you guys, in case that you guys don't know. They already have one for the, I think they have one that's 20 millimeter F2. I think that's like one, the one and only right yeah, now. Yeah, 20 millimeter have, F2, um, manual focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 20 millimeter F2, if you don't know, has its manual focus lens, but it has electronic contact, so it does pass on information about that lens, which is really nice. It's just really Jim, expensive. Jim P, $5. Thank you, man. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Really appreciate that. Uh, Sam Yang will release one or two wide-angle autofocus FE lenses in 2017. I am seeing a trend here, Danny. What's with, what's up with all these super wide, fast wide, wide lenses coming out at the, at the end of 2017? I mean, and then look. Yeah, it sucks I didn't get a chance to, haven't tried out that 35 f2.8. I know people have said it's a little bit slow on the autofocusing, but um, two wide angle FE lenses. Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to be primes, possibly. That's typically what Sam Yang does, is they work with primes. primes. But that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're going to try and work, be a little more cost effective. Is there any current full frame wide angle lenses right now that are primes, Jason? Current? What's out there? Because because I was thinking maybe they're going to emulate a Sony lens, you know, like the thirty five f two point eight, uh huh, pancake. Right. What's out there right now? I don't think there's any. There isn't, like anything wider. It's a, they have a zoom, the twelve to twenty four, right. and sixteen to thirty. You're talking strictly Sony. Uh. No. Well, there's there's the Zeiss know. Batis eighteen. There we go. Okay. So maybe maybe that might be it. Maybe, maybe they'll hit up that. Maybe they'll hit up that range, right? right. Uh, and provide another option for people. I think that'd be great. Cool. Always, always love competition. And uh, Zeiss uh, is going to have another full frame that's going to get announced by the end of this year. No idea what that is. And Sigma apparently will be launching their first full frame lenses by the end of this year. Is the thirty five f one point four and another zoom sometime later after that. So again, these are just rumors, guys. Take it with a grain of salt. But that's what we—that's what um, they're saying. We can expect 
what happened at the end of 2017. I'm I'm all for that sigma. I mean, if that 35 1.4 comes around, I, I mean, I'd probably sell my current sigma 35 that I have for Canon. And get that if it if it's good. I don't I don't know yet. There's there hasn't. We'll, we'll see how Sigma handles it. Um, but the performance is good autofocus wise. I'm all I'm sold. It is priced effectively. I'm all for it. Yeah. So I sold my Zeiss 35 1.4. I sorely miss it. So instead of buying it again, I'm kind of waiting for what Sigma has to offer for their 35 1.4. Yeah. It's it's gonna get better. It's just it's just a lot of waiting right now, unfortunately. So that's all we got. All we can do really. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see what people have to say about APS-C lenses. <laughs> By the way, what, what APS-C lenses from the email that you guys are hoping for? Let us know. Let us know yeah. in the chat. What is your dream APS-C email lens? If they could make one right now, what would you want? Just make sure it's slightly reasonable, I guess. Not something like an F1.0 zoom lens. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like Something reasonable, within reason, I guess. Okay, <laughs> Danny, what are what are you hoping for? Uh, if I'm looking at an APS-C zoom, are we talking about just APS-C lens in general? Uh, well, from I, Sony or yeah, that, that would autofocus. I want, I I definitely want to see an f two point eight to be reasonable, like an f two point eight, like a zoom or a prime. Yeah, I like the seventeen. You know, the original Canon, Canon even. I think Nikon had like a 1755 type yeah. f2.8 lens. Yeah. It's going to be ridiculous on the actual Sony system. I get it. So, but I would still like that option. A 1750 f2.8. Uh, I don't mind a larger lens. I, I would just like the portability of that one lens to autofocus well and perform well and mount it using my uh, Sony system. So that's what I'm itching for. Yeah, same Jason. here. So. So have I, I totally agree. 2.8 zoom will be something that I'm hoping for from Sony. What if it's like what if it's like um I mean what if Sigma just brings over their 18 to 35 native F E mount or native so, E mount? So that'd be crazy, right? So find it find a heartbeat. <laughs> I wonder if it'd be full frame. That's what I'm wondering. Prop because wow. I think there's there's cinema, there's cinema eighteen to thirty five, I believe it's full frame. Oh, they have a cinema 18 to 35. So I don't know. I'm just wondering. Things I'm not sure about. Cool. Let's see here. Let's move on to the chat really quick. <laughs> <laughs> People are making fun of my uh, APSC voice. <laughs> Chris Mega Gate. That was WTF that voice. <laughs> 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 I don't have a full frame voice. So I'll probably have to come up with something. Jim P. Photo says, Jason Vaughn, get a puppet and do ventriloquism with that voice. Hey, Just can I interject fun. real quick? Just a quick tangent. I don't know if you know, but at some point I was like a librarian for a little while. So I would actually read books to like element, like kindergarten kids. And I actually was using a puppet <laughs> one time. <laughs> to read the books. Um, I don't know. That was just was that. Was it because that's more effective with the kindergartners? Oh man, you have to put like 110% when you're reading books to those kids, man. It's it was fun though. It was fun times. Yeah. When I was doing that. Chris Barr says Sony needs to make more lenses without optical steady shot to bring the cost down. Agree or disagree? I mean, that's a good way to bring some costs and even the size. I think that'd be good if that's the benefit that they get out of it, especially if their new A6000 bodies, all, I'm guessing from now on, are going to have sensor stabilization, then I think it's something we could technically live without. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for it without a uh, steady shot on the lenses because the in-body image stabilization just works well on the 6500 <laughs> and all that good jazz. You know, I would say that the only thing I would say, if... if if they could probably do some inexpensive APS-C lenses, that would be great. You know, for example, the 10 to 18 is like 800 bucks yeah. retail. Like if you're going to buy it legit right from the store. Right. Maybe they can do a compromise 10 to 18, like Canon's 4.5 to 5.6, mm -hmm. but for like $400. That's what I'd like to see. Create these different tiers so that there's options. Yes, it's not fast, but at least there's an option for somebody on their price bracket. So if they could get to that point, 
or if these third-party manufacturers can help help that happen and fill in these gaps, that's great. That'd be a perfect situation. That's why I look at it. I do have to point out that um, I was considering when I what back when I was using the GH four, I was considering getting the seven to fourteen uh, lens. Mm-hmm. That that also was like seven hundred seven to eight hundred dollars. It's expensive stuff, man. What the hell? <laughs> I was like, man. That, I think that's that's why I opted to buy the um, Tokina eleven to sixteen and just adapt it to my GH four. I think it was like a lot cheaper. How much was it again? Well, like three hundred bucks for that lens, the eleven to sixteen. Yeah, it was it was ridiculously expensive, and I was like, I gotta get it. And it's about yeah, it's about I think I got it for three fifty, so almost half the cost of what the um, GH four, what, whatever the Panasonic one, seven fourteen, however much it cost. Cool. Let's see here. Um, Let's see. Someone is asking for a uh, Vex Vegas is asking for an eighteen to seventy f two point eight native. Oh wow! <laughs> that's gonna be a man. I I mean, I, I'm not saying it's impossible. I just it might be. That's cool. I mean, that be that's a that's a great range. I just don't know if it's if it's gonna be a pretty big lens. Maybe slightly bigger lens. Yeah, Matthew Matthew's channel is also. 18105 f2.8 18, holy F2. mac and cheese i mean it's a dream lens right just drop whatever you think you want that'd be crazy Eight, who knows 18. maybe maybe it's gonna happen man uh yun chien lo says uh 16 to 50 millimeter f2.8 okay that, again that's that reasonable range reasonable uh rodell is asking for sigma 50 to 100 1.8 in full frame email <laughs> See, I think that I think their cinema is full frame. I, I think they made them full frame. So it I don't think I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. Very possible. Jason uh, Malihan asks 12 millimeter F1.8. What is that? Is that like a 17 millimeters or something? Something like that. 18 millimeters when you when you translate. Oh, 18, it to, 18, 18, yeah. Yeah. Armani J says 135, 2.8. Hopefully, you can get the, the Zeiss version. <laughs> you can get the Zeiss two thousand dollar one already for that. Two grand, two grand. Let's see here. Um, Tuba Dylan two. says, "I'm happy with all the Sony full frame lenses on my sixty three hundred and sixty five hundred. Very cool. They're, they're great stuff. It okay, work. Tony A is looking for a native Sigma eighteen to thirty five fifty to one hundred f one point eight for the E mount. Mm-hmm. That'd be really awesome." Chris Barr, I want an 85 f1.4 for Sony for APS-C. I'm assuming, right? It's it's factored in as an APS-C lens in that case. Let's see, Sigma. JYP Photo says a 2.8 lens will be huge on an APS-C. Just look at Fuji 16 to 55, and it's huge on the XC2. It's gonna be crazy big on the A6500. It just depends. I mean, if you want something compact, I mean, you're never gonna get. It just depends on your needs. I mean, sometimes it doesn't really bother me. I mean, like for example, I'm using the 7200 G Master on those A6000 series cameras every now and then, so. It is what it is, unfortunately. But I know people want some lighter stuff, though. Sure. Chris Mega Game says all kit lenses come in f two point eight from now on. Hashtag Dream Lens. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right. I think we got through all the APC all right. comments. Okay. So yeah. are we on to some 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 Q and A? All right. Now we are jumping on to open Q and A. So let us know. Your burning questions with the hashtag QA, and Danny and I will seek out those questions, find it, answer it, <laughs> and be done with the show. <laughs> I, I almost thought you froze right now because you didn't move for at least <laughs> one second. Sometimes I, I look. Go. Sometimes I'm like, man, is did Jason just stop moving? What's going on here? Did the did the stream freeze? 
Uh, <laughs> that's how that's that's how we like to give each other heart attacks. It's just like when I start hearing you like start to like have static on your end or like you start like lagging, I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> I guess for me it's just like uh <laughs> we both do that and then like a hundred people like everybody just leaves the stream. <laughs> they're, like, they're, like, they're like peace out. No, they, 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 yeah, you guys are usually good at letting us know if we're oh, like, a problem. if we're potato quality or something, or there's a lag, or what you might call it. I, All I, right. I love the potato quality. So uh, let's see here. I think you put in the doc. Uh, Jeff Ivory, Jason Vong, I'm thinking about buying the new Godox 8200 for my Sony A6500. What are your thoughts on Godox? They're great. It's what all the hip Sony kids are using. You should get it. <laughs> it's true, dude. I like how you, I like how you sell the hip, the hip, what, what the hip Sony kids are using, man. Oh man, it's true. In all in, in all seriousness, yeah. I mean, like, uh, from from all the patterns, from just from like all the social media posts that I've been seeing, a lot of people have been grabbing either Flashpoint or Godox. They're essentially the same products, and uh, people have been ha very happy with the results. I mean, they have uh, speed lights that have TTL support for Sony cameras. So if that's a big thing for you, having TTL, then go for Godox. I don't mm -hmm. think Young Newell has a um, has a um, support for Sony yet. I could be wrong. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, fun fact. It's not Godox. It's actually pronounced God Ox. Okay, we're done here, guys. Show's <laughs> over. <laughs> so we've been saying it. How'd you, how'd you find out? So I was looking over the packaging when, when Godox. I was still going to say Godox anyways, but <laughs> <laughs> when I got the package, I saw the two Chinese characters, and I was like, wait a minute, this says God and Ox in Chinese characters. So that means it's pronounced God Ox, not God Ox. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe we'll find them and then we'll ask them directly too. Like, so let's just, let's you don't just trust my this. Chinese, Danny? You don't trust my Chinese? It's okay, God I trust I'm God Ox. God. <laughs> you didn't even get it right. <laughs> God Ox. God Ox. Where's my Chinese homies hats? Back me up right here. <laughs> All right, let's jump into the let's jump into um the uh, chat. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Joseph Broham says, "How do I get my beautiful Canon skin tones with the A7R2 RAW files that tends to make people look like orange men?" <laughs> <laughs> I've never had problems. I I don't know. I don't really. I mean, I don't ever see like anything dramatic in my from from my shooting. So I don't know. Everyone's different. Everyone's shooting style is different in what they're doing. But yeah, for me, I feel like I have to saturate the skins a little bit more on the Sony. So um, what I do is I do what Francisco does in his editing. I just have to pull out Lightroom really quick. And let me. Oh crap! I have to sign in. You're gonna crash your computer. technical difficulties. I'm gonna crash it, huh? Like right. Mario Crespi asks, "Are you gonna going to Photo Plus? We will be there. We will and be still, at Photo Plus. We're, we're still looking for the guy that's gonna hook us up with some pizza. <laughs> Was the guy who was gonna buy us pizza uh, in New York? Hack us again. We're dying for some pizza. Okay. All right, I found it. So if you're using Lightroom, um, what I do is I go to ca color uh, camera calibration, which is all the way on the bottom, and go to blue primary and just either punch in plus 20, plus 40, or plus, I think, 60 on the saturation, see if that's any better. But that's what I usually do in the photos, still come out pretty good. And the skin tones oh, are like cool. back what they were. They're like not as dull as before, but that's what I usually do to bring up some saturation back to the photo. Usually oh, helps. Awesome. It brings back some warmer tones to the photo as well. All right. Victor uh, Cologne asks, can I yeah. shoot flash with electronic shutter? Jason Vong, you take that question. I don't. <laughs> wow, Danny, let me go grab my <laughs> mine right now because I am the master of the A9. <laughs> I'm not either. I'm trying to be a master with the A9. So. Sarcasm. Well, have you used it? No, I, I honestly did not get a chance to try firing any flash. I think you have to switch back to shutter 
right? Or like what 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 you would call it? Mechanical shutter, right? Mechanical shutter. So you have so you have to be a mechanical shutter to fight or flash. I don't, ask me in like another month, Victor. I'm sure someone else can help. I I I don't have enough. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm being honest. I don't want to give the wrong answer. That's true. Sorry. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm still using the camera. It's really hard to give a full comprehensive, like, how is the experience completely, but still working. Cool. Go for it, Jason. You're next. Uh, let's see here. Um, easy photo video. How do full frame shooters die? <laughs> <laughs> I'm go ahead. I'm gonna have go to, ahead, Jason. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> what are Jonathan the drawbacks of using FE lenses on the APS-C body? By Jonathan Chan. Um, I don't know, Danny. Do you know? Uh, you enhance some of the optical deficiencies, I guess, in the lens, or they become more pronounced. Um, because when you're using a full frame lens, you're using the center portion of the lens, I guess, the closer to the middle. And I think at times the optical issues, like the imperfections in the lens, can be more apparent. So, and also you're not taking full advantage of the actual scope of the actual lens either. Um, I, I think that's what they usually say. I'm just regurgitating what I've heard in the past. So don't, that's in, what I, I want to say. My, in my personal opinion, if you don't see any big drawbacks yourself, it's probably not a big deal. I, there you, you go. I use full frame lenses on my cameras all the time. Come out freaking amazing. You're talking about photos. I just slapped on a 70 to 200 f2.8 or the 85 1.8 on my a6000 shot some concert photos with it came out more amazing than my a6500 so see but i think it depends on the quality of that full frame lens if it's a good lens it's a good yeah. then you're all you're all set if it's a not a very good quality lens then you may see some issues but okay. sony is pretty good sony is pretty good with their their higher end lenses so um next one's ramir 280-200s with an ADB2 or a single AD600. What's the B2? I don't know what that is. Do you know? Um, no. I think I I know what he's talking about with the 280-200s because there's like a, a new thing where you can attach two of the two of them together. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if we have to say which one is the better one. Go for the. I, I I think the thing was this was that the if you got the two eighty two hundreds with the attachment, you have the flexibility. You get about a similar power output to the six hundred, I think, maybe somewhat to that level, but you saw the portability of just using one eighty two hundred when you need it. True. So you can combine them when you need them when you need a little bit more power, and then when you absolutely only just need one, you have the ability to separate it. The eighty two hundred, the eighty six hundred, you can't separate it. You got to lug that that big. Flash it, the, the light. So I don't know. I haven't shot with those at all, so I can't say anything more than that. So um, I don't know. I I've only ever used either one eighty two hundred or one eighty six hundred, and I personally say if I have a bit more control over my environment, six hundred all the way. But if I have to be extremely mobile, two hundred. The two hundred does not replace the six hundred, in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Vex Vegas asks, what do you guys think of the red I uh, sorry, I was gonna say iPhone. <laughs> what do you guys think of the red phone? I personally don't know too much about it to say anything substantial about it. I think it's dead on arrival. It's well, here's the thing. It's it's only for a specific group of people. So it's it's gonna it's gonna sash um it's gonna be interesting for those particular people that want that type of phone, but when was the last time you saw a modular phone and it didn't it didn't really work well? The LG, the LG G5 was modular in design. Google was designing a modular type phone as well, I believe, but I didn't think it ever came into fruition. Um, it was like the point was that you could change the CPU processor and all these things, and they're like little components. So I I really don't know yet. I mean, so it's more specific for like people who might be interested in like. Or more used to the RET products. Yeah, it, but it's kind of like maybe are you saying maybe their their phone? See, but their phone it, it's like they're saying their phone their their lives. They're giving them the ability to get the quality of a red camera in their pocket, so they want them to use it in their day to day lives, taking pictures, recording video, 
things like that. But then all of a sudden you, you add all these weird attachments to it. Then in my mind, I'm like, then what is this device now? Why not just make it a camera, like an, an actual camera for these people? Because they're going to lug around all these different parts. I don't know. I, I don't know yet. Check out Matt Workman from Cinema Cinematography Database. He's uh, he. I think he has a red phone on pre-order. Uh, Damon Hart says, "Jason, your link to your Instagram below doesn't go to your profile." I know. I was told to mo this morning, and I was like, "All my recent videos, oh, did not have an outlink to my Instagram." So, I am gonna fix that sometimes. I soon. mean, if you search Jason Vong on Instagram, do you pop up first? Let's find out. We will find out right now. We will investigate this at this moment. Jason, Instagram Jason Vong. Let's see if he pops up first. I, yeah, I, I do. I, I am the first one. Yep. And a shameless plug. I think I am. Oh, great. My Instagram is updating. I think I'm less than 50 away from 2,000 followers. So. Damn it. He's, Jason Vong is passing me on Instagram. I need some more followers. <laughs> am I, am I really? <laughs> yes. I just, I just want the swipe up feature on the Instagram. That's all I want. I, I'm, I, working, I'm working so hard right now to get the swipe up feature. Because I think you, you have need, to have like a certain amount of followers. 10K. You, have, you need 10K. Okay, so okay, I am I am 1964 right now, followers. So get me to 2,000. You guys, <sighs> and you guys haven't followed me yet. It's at Jason V Media. I'm going to type that out. Shameless plug, Jason V Media. It's all right. Riddell Photo, well, Jason Vaughn plugs himself. <laughs> Riddell says, see you too at Sammy's camera. Uh, I, Jason Vaughn won't be able to make it out to that one, but uh, I'm going to be there on Saturday. Saturday. I just saw 100 viewers just flash before my eyes. So. Nice. As long as traffic's all good on my end. <laughs> all right. Dave Sincere has got me, got me. He says, you're right. It's got ox. Chris uh, Mega Games, what brand would you recommend for ND filters for the 55 millimeters? Uh, honestly, I only have experience with a Tiffin one, so. You know, there was this one brand called Lightcraft Variable ND Filters, but Light they stopped Craft. making. Yeah, it was called Lightcraft, okay. and I always wanted to buy one because apparently they were high quality ones for video, but they never, they just disappeared. They stopped manufacturing them, I think, unless they came back recently, but um, there's some other ones. Some really expensive ones, though. I don't know, Chris Mega Games. I just, for video and stuff, I just use whatever I can get. Inexpensive stuff. But I'm sure you're using it for photos, and that's a different story. I just got more followers. Damn. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I was Thanks, like, oh, guys. My phone just went off. That's unprofessional. And you just silent. And I see, like, more Instagram follows. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mario, uh, hi, are you guys going to Photo Plus? Yes, we yes. are. He's going to hook us up with pizza, too. All right, cool. Moving on. <laughs> oh, yes. Is he, are you the pizza guy? <laughs> Our search for the pizza guy. Damon Hart asked, do you guys do any street shooting? If so, what lenses do you recommend? I do not do any street shooting, unfortunately. I don't. I just have dirts and fields in my area. Not a lot of street, unfortunately. So... Yeah, not not too much myself either, but I should. And, and a swift um, punch to the face. <laughs> you know, the, some of the streets. I think like I'm a huge fan of like um, might seem a little weird, but I, I follow this one guy who lives in Japan, and he's I think he's French, but he shoots with a Fuji now. But before that, he was shooting with the Canon and a Panasonic, and he was using the. I don't know. He likes using like 100, mill 100 millimeter lenses, 135 millimeter lenses. I think he's using 90 right now for his Fuji. I could be wrong, but it gives off this really nice compression for street photography. So if I were if I were to choose street street photography, I might use the 85 or the 135. The look if I was going to use street photography, yeah, I would use like a like a 10 millimeter wide angle lens and go right up to the person. <laughs> Like this big, just go right up to their face, take the picture, and smile, and hope I don't get it get it get punched in the face. <laughs> Always ask for permission. <laughs> ask for permission after, and slowly walk away. Ask or use film, film like yeah. Eric Kim. 
Patrick Chang says, shooting a wedding for a friend in about a month. I have the A72, A6300, 20 millimeter, sorry, 28 millimeter F2 and 55.18, renting the 7200 F4. Any other suggestions to rent? Uh, are you shooting oh. Oh, all photos? Okay, good. Um, Another, uh, um, it looks okay, unless you want to get the 7200 F2.8 if you feel you need a faster. Lens. Oh, I think you're good. You have the creative uh, lens, the 5518, and then you have the 7200 for um, maybe ceremony, for portraits. You know, I, I think you got yourself covered. And, and you have a wide too, a 28 F2. I think yeah, that's, that's, a, really that's full frame. I mean, they're all full frame lenses. Yeah. I think you have all your bases covered for sure. Yeah, you can, you can survive with that. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a run and gun lens, like you think you're gonna capture a lot of event stuff that's moving around a lot, maybe the 18 to 105 or the 16 to 70, but for the most part, you you can make do with what you got. At first I thought Patrick Chag was saying asking for a friend. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> not me. Just asking for <laughs> Mario Crespi says, QA, forget pizza, go for the meatball shop. That sounds pretty good too. I will eat anything. <laughs> Just not seafood, but I'll eat anything. Just just take us there. Uh, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Mario Crespi also asked, do you have any news on the A7R Mark III? Yes, it is coming eventually. <laughs> <laughs> nothing Sorry, nothing on our end, Mario. Yeah, nothing on our end. I, I, my ship sailed a long time ago when I made that A9 video. They're never going to tell me anything anymore, man. It's It's long gone. <laughs> David Osler in the house. AZ photo video said he, he didn't do the voice. <laughs> Wait, when, when was I supposed to do the voice? I have no idea. Um, see, David Osler, Oops, mechanical shutter. You leave the A9 auto switches itself to mechanical shutter with flash. Okay. I knew it. Thank you, David Osler. So mechanical shutter for flash will switch itself. Or if it's on auto, it'll switch itself to mechanical shutter if you have a flash. Uh, um, that's smart. That's good. Thank you, David. You guys should subscribe to David Osler because he's got some kick-ass videos. Very, very valuable resources in photography. Van Lien. Okay, this is a tough one. He says, what is recommended lens for the Sony Alpha 6500? I already have the 35 f1.8, the 50 f1.8 kit lens. Oh, the 16 to 50 kit lens, the, 20, the 55 to 210, the 18 to 105, and the 85 f1.8. I am very new in the photography world. Uh, Van, just maybe shoot more? I You got a lot of stuff already. Like, that's good. Jason, what do you think? I mean, a 70, I mean, you kind of have like your zones. Yeah, you I would have probably covered, man. I don't think you need any more I, lenses. The only thing I would say well, is maybe. Of course, me and Danny, but. <laughs> Unless you want an ultra wide, then maybe look at the Makey 12 millimeter f2.8 or the Rokinon 12 millimeter f2.8. Or if you have some more cash, get the 10 to 18 because you don't have like an ultra, ultra wide lens. That's the only thing I would say at this time. But, but go I, and take, just yeah, use it. Just, I think just it. shoot more and see what, what you think you're missing. I don't think you're missing much because you already have a lot covered. But maybe you find out that you need an ultra wide lens. And if you do, rocking on 12 millimeter. Just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Keep on shooting. Let's see here. I finally got to Jason Bong's Instagram post. Yeah, I caught up to my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's here. By the way, guys, there's Godox updates for the transmitter and flashes came out this week. I didn't even know you can even update them. That's insane. That's cool. Awesome. Damon Hart says, I wanted to shoot people looking at the eclipse today, but I felt too weird. Oh, no. <laughs> Do it anyways. <laughs> Uh, I thought he meant shoot. Oh, photos. Got it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Chris Cheek. Oh, he's late, late to the party. He got a C100 Mark II. Oh, awesome. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. I thought, he, I thought he meant C200. Never mind. Oh. I mean, you know what? I, I, I said I owned the C100 for a little while, maybe like five months or something, six months. And really enjoyed it. I really wanted the C2, the C100 Mark II. It was just out of my – it was kind of – it's more expensive at the time. But – I don't know. It's just, I think there's there is a specific purpose for those things. Like when you need something, record long time, works, all that stuff. 
all in one. Those are great stuff. Lion the Lion, hashtag QA, still struggling to sell my Zeiss 85 Batiste so I can downgrade to the Sony 85. What's the realistic number you think I can sell it for? And what sites do you recommend besides Craigslist and eBay? Not that one site that Jason Vong had tried to use. <laughs> so marketplace. Which, I got mine for like 1100 bucks or less, I think, when I bought it from B&H Photo. I expect to sell it for, if I was going to sell it, I'd probably, I'd, I would, I know I'm going to take a hit. I'd probably, if I was going to get rid of it, maybe 800 I don't know. Yeah, I was, thinking, I was thinking you you probably had to let go of it for like under a grand. Yeah. You could wait longer, um, but I don't know. If you want to sell, you just got to drop the price. I mean, there's – or just keep waiting. I mean, that's the only other thing. Let's see here. Noah's SF. Noah's, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go for it. I recently saw my Sony and left the system for various reasons, but still follow your video because I enjoy your videos. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, man. Wait, his his name's backwards. It's Sean Harrison. Damn. I just looked down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> I'm the Browns asking about your background, sir. Oh, oh are you Chinese or Jap and are you Chinese? No, okay, you visit Japan, but can we oh I'm not Japanese. That's that's very flattering, but I'm not I'm not Japanese. I remember that one time where I said <laughs> Watashi wa nihongo ga wakarimasen. I remember when you said that. I was like, "Oh shoot, damn. <laughs> that's pretty good." Uh, just no, I'm, just I'm I'm Chinese, but I'm like I'm like American born, U.S. born, U.S. born. So like two per, so like Chinese to me is like kind of like you're an American, basically Chinese. Like gone. you're way more gone. Yeah, you're... I can speak a little bit of Chinese, but yeah, I. I could probably survive in Hong Kong, but that's about it. As long as you can survive, that's all that Wouldn't matters. get me a job. Let's just say Chinese would not get me a job. Justin Toe, I hope I said that last name correct, says, is it worth it to buy an 85 millimeter G Master versus a non-G F1.8 version? I think if you are bread and butter portraits and you absolutely want the best quality, go for that. Um, other than that, I think the 1.8 is good. I mean, if your if your Sony body has in body image stabilization, there's I don't really think there's a need for it. I don't know, Jason. What do you think? Oh, like Danny says, bread and butter, 85. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris Bar. Oh, Chris Bar says, do you guys have any personal photo projects you are working on? No, but if you're talking about personal projects, you're looking at it right now. <laughs> it's the first, this is the passion project right now um i mean i just do like high school sports photography chris bar so it's as far as personal personal photo projects i nothing un, under unusual from what i do normally so it's typically related to what i what i see all the time which is the sports stuff so i i would say what's fun for me is like portrait photography and concert photography. I see. I would say more so concert photography because it's just like one of those things. Like I don't get paid, or I don't get paid much for concert photography, but I just like doing it. And it doesn't matter if I get paid or not. It's just like being able to shoot. You know, just capture some action. It just it's just kind of like a it's kind of therapeutic for me. I would say. So I don't know if that's considered close to a personal photo project, but yeah. Hazik Johari asks. How do you think of setting up audio for like the Alpha 6500 or any other APS-C Sony system, I'm assuming, and Rode VideoMic Pro when the situations keep shifting without using a monitor or audio recorder, which allows headphone access? I guess he's, this person's asking about how do you deal in the scenario where the audio levels are changing? So no headphones. So just straight up camera, microphone. Jason, how would you tackle that? Without secondary audio, I'm guessing. <laughs> that is tough man i think i think i was hit with this question too i think matt workman was wondering if there was a auto level on the 6500 but there's no auto level on sony so i mean my if i if i were you i'd probably run a separate audio like have it record with like a zoom h1 or something or you can even get like a splitter i think if you watch caleb from dslr video shooters he has like he has he has a way he has a method of splitting the audio where like you record one 
uh, you record um, on the left channel the 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 one that you want the the level that you want, but on the right it could be a few decibels lower. So even if it peaks on the left channel, it won't like go crazy on the right channel. So look up DSLR video shooter. He might have something on that. Or actually, he does have something on that. I just don't know what the video is called exactly. Yeah, there's some there's some specific products that you can get as far as audio hardware goes. Yeah. But the microphone that Jason Vong just got, the Rode Video Mic Plus, has a negative 10 dB pad where you can split the signal. You can get the right channel and the left channel. It'll do minus 10 dB. So um, just get the microphone that uh, Jason Bunk. <laughs> the Video Mic Pro Plus can do that? Yeah, you can split. You can do a. You can do two two audio signals. One that's negative oh ten and normal. Oh my god, this is game changing. <laughs> so it can save your butt in a really, you know, tire, uh, troublesome situation. But you know what? For all the times that I've ever filmed, back in the Canon days, you know when Canon started impl had the headphone jack with the 5D Mark III. I don't know if you remember that happening. But I never had to use it very much. I just trusted the audio and I adjusted the audio as I saw it, and I wasn't listening to it. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying that I got so used to being able to change the audio quickly without having to do that. But hey, everyone's situations are different. I'm just letting you know my situations were different where, um, you know, I had another audio source as a backup in case I ever needed, but I never ever had to go to that backup audio source usually, just straight from the camera. That's just me though. All right. No no lie, when that Video Mic Pro Plus promo video came out, I, I, I legit did not watch it. I just pre-ordered it. <laughs> Because oh, I gosh. I need a video, I need a new shotgun mic because mine got destroyed at a wedding, so it had to be replaced. So I was just like, oh, does, it doesn't matter what it can do. I'll just I'll just buy it. So good to know that the negative 10 dB actually records to a separate channel. Yeah, it's awesome, man. That's probably the big thing about that. Awesome, awesome. Let's see. Van Lien says, uh, thank you guys. Keep on shooting. We'll do that. Cool. Uh, cool. Saying you suff says uh, one lens to woo them all. What is your Current favorite lens, uh, twenty-four millimeter, one point eight for the APS-C. My favorite. What's well, the one I've been using a lot as of late? My the twelve to twenty-four that Sony took back. <laughs> <laughs> That's your one lens to rule them all, huh? Oh man, I am going to buy that lens at some point, but I'm just gonna keep waiting and waiting and waiting because I need more money. Okay, so. Andre Pinto, hey everybody, I own an Alpha 6500 and an 18105. I am thinking about getting a new lens with a faster aperture. I shoot mainly music videos. Which one do you recommend to get, the 50 or the 35 or the Sony or Sigma? Hmm. Um, I would say since you're shooting music videos, 3514 from Sigma would be a pretty good option because you'd probably be overlaying the video with music anyway, so you wouldn't have to worry about the autofocus noise. Um, other than that, the 3518 optical steady shot, that's a good one too. It just depends. I mean, it's tough. I, I mean, I don't shoot music videos like as a thing, but I mean, the Sigma, the, the Sigma one is good. The reason why I would say the Sigma is good is because if you manual focus, it's a nice lens to manual focus with. If you do autofocus, it will still work. It's just like Jason Vong said it's a little, just a little bit noisy. Yeah, but it really depends. You're not gonna get native speed though. Don't think it's just gonna like autofocus. But I don't know if you manual focus, then that's a different story. I don't know the situation completely. Cool. Nikolai says, uh, "What lenses would you recommend for the 6500 for video? I already have the 18 to 105, 35 one eight. Any help would be greatly appreciated." Mm, Ten to eighteen, or the tw or a twelve millimeter ultra wide. <laughs> That's my recommendation on my end. Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're pretty good with what you have. So, if anything, I would say, as Danny said, if you need like wide angle lens, those will be the two ones to look at. Yeah, there. I think they'll be fun to use. You'll enjoy it, uh, unless you want to get a fifty-five to two hundred and ten if you're on the budget. Jim P says, "Is gyoza Chinese or Japanese food?" When I lived in Yokohama, local restaurant claimed it was Chinese, but served anyway. You know what? Well, gyoza is just another name for fried dumpling, I guess. It's Yeah, yeah, gyoza is just a Japanese word for fried dumpling, so. Hey, this is a tangent, Jason. Do you watch any food food shows on YouTube? Food people on YouTube? I used to. I used to watch a lot cuz the channel I ran 
had to do had to we we actually had a <laughs> cooking portion of our channel. So, hmm. but what's up? Because I watch like there's the Food Ranger, there's Mark Weens, he travels a lot, and then there's like this new guy, the Best Food Review Show. It's a pretty funny guy. I don't know. That's just me though. I was just wondering if you if you watch any right now, but. No, not not right now. I think uh, back sometimes then I, I like to just the funny thing. Sometimes, sometimes I just just like to watch stuff other than camera stuff. <laughs> I just like. Oh no, just, I, I I know what you mean. I, I <laughs> whenever I'm just like, I plop down and I'm just like, what should I watch today? And then it's like all my subscription feed is like camera, 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 uh, camera, 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 camera. I'm like, maybe I should take a break from the camera stuff and maybe watch something else. And I would watch Dragon Ball or something. <laughs> yeah, I've seen. Have you been keeping up with the latest stuff? Uh, no. I, well, the Dragon Ball that I was watching a couple weeks ago was like the was the fan dub. Like, oh, okay. okay. Like one of those like a bridge stuff. So I was just like, oh, whatever. It was funny. Got a, got a good laugh out of it. But no, I, I I try keeping up with the new Dragon Ball, but I don't know. I just I just I it's kind of good. It's kind of going out there a little bit. It was interesting in the beginning, and uh, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. But, but yeah, I don't, don't guys are interested in Dragon Ball. It's just I I do I watch a lot of other tech stuff like like Linus, uh, other like Jace Two Cents. Yeah. Um, now we're going on a different tangent here, but yeah, I just I try to watch some other stuff every now and then, and then because sometimes you just get kind of overloaded with like camera gear. I think I think it got to the point where a couple of days ago I started watching StarCraft because <laughs> <laughs> they just released the new the the StarCraft remastered, and I'm just like. Ah, this just takes me back to my days. And I started watching like like those like game footage the, and I started watching the competitive plays and I'm like, this is pretty cool. Is it the is this the old school StarCraft or the, the newer one? They remastered the old StarCraft, so um StarCraft Really? Or yeah, so it's like it's like slightly Wars? updated graphics. It's slightly updated graphics. Okay. But it plays the same because they want to keep the the magic alive. So they didn't mess with any of the bugs, they didn't mess with any like Whatever stuff they they want to keep it as pure as possible. Man, I will have to check that out someday. We'll see. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how esports is just taken over, man. Like I watch, I watch like I was just watching their their coverage. I'm just like, man, these are some good B roll right here. <laughs> <laughs> so they've been stepping it up. This this is this um, is this is some crazy production. I think I've already mentioned before in the past. I wanted a shoutcast for StarCraft. Like that was going to be oh, my yeah. YouTube channel. I remember that. You have the was, voice, and I think you should. It was because of the folks that were doing it back then early on when I was in college. I was like, man, I could do this. And I and I got the new copy of StarCraft, and I was like, I'm terrible at this game. You don't even know what's going on. I don't even know what's going on half the time. That's why I'm terrible at StarCraft. I'm just like, what do I build? Do I build this? Do I send this unit here? What do I do? Okay, we're going to go. We're going to lose everybody. You have to be like <laughs> a hype man for like StarCraft. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Carry got like, carried away with Dragon Ball and StarCraft. All right. Okay. Um, Rodan. Lion the Lions. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on there. I'm just seeing all kinds of questions. All right. Oh, okay. So Lion the Lion says, do you guys have any recommendations for Pelican case models that would fit an AD600, A72, and a few lenses? Wheels would be nice too. Uh, my Pelican 1510 was able to carry all that. Um, just not the uh, off the box. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I I don't earlier I mentioned I have a Pel like a Pelican SKG. I I already have another Pelican. I don't know if it's like a fifteen sixteen or whatever. But this one's a little bit smaller. But I haven't even opened the box, so I have zero idea. Yeah, okay. um, Lion the Lion. Try try looking up the fifteen ten model for the Pelican. That's what I use. It's pretty standard. It fits on most overhead compartments as well. There's like the is it called tet Tetra or something like the little the little modular. Uh, yeah. dividers you can buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I was interested in that, but then you had to cut it and everything, and I was like, I don't know if I had, I want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was at some point. I even consider like trying to get this one company. It's like a, a go to my case dot com or something. They would mm -hmm. custom cut the foam for you, so you don't have to do it. So I was actually considering that, but in the end, I just stuck with the padded padded dividers because it just it just works for me. I'll just maybe I'll just contact them and see what happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Contact <laughs> them and see what's up. Um, what else is there? Uh, Rodell says, uh, "Can't wait for the Video Mic Pro Plus." I'll see what I can do. 
I see Aditya Chandel asks, hey guys, thanks for your expertise advice. So the 1670, that doesn't exist. Or the 18105 for 75% photography and 25% videography on gimbal. What's the, are you talking about the 16 to 50? No, there's a 16 to 70 for Zeiss. There's a 16 to 70 for Zeiss? You're lying. What the hell, Danny? There's a Sigma. What? What are we? There's a 16 to 70 for Zeiss, man. You have you have the lens, don't you? Oh yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you have too many things, you forget. Sometimes when you're that one camera guy, you forget things. Oh god. I uh, I don't know anymore. Do I have it right here? No, this is the 55 f1.8. Yeah, they look, they tend to look the same after a while. They do. So what would you do? Would you get the 16 to 7 or the 18 to 105? 18 to 105. If you're going to use it for gimbal, 18 to 105. But they only do 25% videography. Oh, you know, people say 18 to 105 is very comparable to the 16 to 70. True. And it's also uh, internal zooming, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Andre Brown gave that one camera guy a comment. A compliment? Uh, is it me or is that as uh, uh, that one camera guy super smart? Still this wealth of info. Uh, I don't know. I do appreciate that. I'm the brown. <laughs> yeah, the voice of our generation. Uh, just that when you work with a bunch of high school kids all the time, you do. I don't know. You, you, my brain's fried. Okay, moving on. All right, Daniel, let's blaze through some of these. Our media ninety six says, "How's the Rokin on twelve millimeter at that one camera guy?" I am currently using it right now, and I am. Trying to find time to test it out. So still working on it. Cool. Snapflix says, do you guys game if so Nintendo, Xbox, or Sony? Uh, we recently cracked open my Wii U and started playing Mario Party 2. Um, I pretty much... You know what I really liked? And it's funny. I got the Sony. I was using to play Final Fantasy. I was playing Final Fantasy on like the PS3. And then the Enchartered stuff, I like playing that one. Uh, so I guess Sony, Nintendo, not so much as of late. Yeah. I don't even have the news. I didn't even have the Nintendo, the Nintendo, the Wii U. Nathan, you know, I Nintendo asked my role. students today. I asked. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I I asked my students like, what Nintendo system have you guys played on? These are high school students. They're like 15, 16 years old, and they said the the last system they they played on the oldest one was like the Wii. At this point, mm. it's getting scary. I'm getting old. <laughs> Some even played the 64, which is interesting, but it was interesting. All right, Classic. sorry, Jason. Go ahead. Oh no, Nathan Figaro is like need to watch me. I uh, have a uh, eating challenges and terrible DIYs. You guys should check out Nathan Figaro, man. I I've been watching his vlogs, and they are gosh, just so, they're so incredibly they're, they're well shot and they're well edited. I'm like so I was like. So thrown away when I first like discovered his channel, or actually when I went first went to his channel, I was like, "Holy crap!" He used Zhiyun cranes, A sixty five hundred, I think. He even flies a drone at the restaurants that he's eating. It's crazy. You guys need to check him out. Nathan, figure Nathan, have you done that chip challenge? I was telling my students about that. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> "What chip challenge?" Because uh, my students were like, "Hey, let's do a Calorie and a Reaper challenge for fundraising or something." I was like, "What the heck?" And then uh, I said, we'll, we'll eat that chip that's really hot. <laughs> oh. Unknown Jones says, more Dragon Ball talk. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Uh, Chris Mega Games, would you all recommend a Ryzen build for the editing 4K footage? Yeah, yeah, it's you. I think the problem with the Ryzen stuff is that it's lacking quick sync, I think, or something like that. Because that's, that's an Intel thing. And I think Premiere takes advantage of that. I could be wrong. Damon Hart says, I'm no good at StarCraft, but I enjoy watching it. Me too. Me too. Let's see here. Chris Mega Games will be recording the new Dragon Ball Z Fighter game when it launches. That actually looks pretty intense. Um, AZ Photos, any idea how the Roto Light compared to the 8600 in terms of output and power when shooting midday? Uh, I, I don't, man. I, I haven't used the roto light myself. Jai, Jai says, what photo editing software would you recommend for a beginner but fast learner? Most interested in Capture One for Sony because of the excellent price, 
a Luminar because it's easy to use. Um, I would say Lightroom. I, I couldn't think of anything easier than Lightroom, actually. But Capture One is very similar to Lightroom. Maybe a little bit harder for me to navigate just because I'm more used to Lightroom. But I think yeah, that's really Capture it. I, I, I'm just so comfortable with it. Yeah. The Lightroom is anything, just like anything so honestly works because I've but... seen people make some amazing photos out of Snapseed too. So you just need them sliders, and that's it. All right. Let's see, Nathan Figueroa says, "Should I sell my 16 to 35 f4 for the 16 to 35 2.8? I should with the a7s2, but I want that extra stretch of low light capabilities. Just don't like the price." Hmm. I mean, so from the 16 to 35, what's that going for? Like 1,200 right now? So that's an additional $1,000. I will. That's if we can sell it for that price. Yeah. So he's gonna have to tack on an extra one 1,000. I think I sold my F4 for like 900 bucks. I don't know. I don't that's know. a tough one. In my opinion, it's maybe you're fine with just the F4. I don't know. Are you looking? Are you looking for that zoom? Because the baddest is pretty awesome. Yeah, I guess figure out what what does what zoom do you are you always on? Like what range is kind of your main thing? Maybe you can replace it with the prime. Like maybe, maybe he wants time. the flexibility because vlogging, you want that zooming flexibility too. So, but see, once you go to sixteen thirty five f two point eight, it's, it's going to be a little bit heavier though, right? It's going to be so, well, Nathan, a little bit heavy. Na Nathan is a uh, you know, <laughs> he's he he can handle it, man. You you and I got some. Well, I have skinny arms, so it's, it, it might, oh, it, it, then just, I'm not worried then. The Nathan's good then. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> See you later, Amda Brown. Get some rest, man. I'd say, yeah, I don't know. I I say you're fine with the F4. I don't think I don't think you really need to switch to 2.8. Um, Nathan says he's done the chips. I have a bag in his. He has a bag in his closet. <laughs> uh, Jim Justin Chu says, uh, for encoding, Ryzen is great for raw editing speed. Scrubbing Intel is better, in his opinion. And uh, let's see here. Dave Sincere says, Capture One is 50 bucks if you use Sony. And uh, he likes the Infinity Photo more instead of Photoshop. Screw paying $10 a month for a subscription for life. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else is here? Snapflix says, have you guys seen gameplay of Battlegrounds? P-U-B-G. If you've seen the movie Battle Royale, it's basically like that with 100 people. Intense. I haven't seen that at all. I, I have seen Battle Royale if we're talking about the Japanese film from a while back. Yes, I have. I actually have not seen it yet. And you... Yeah. It's, a good, <laughs> it's a good movie. It's interesting. I, heard, I, I was told it was a good movie. Um, Nathan Figueroa says, I think I'll stick with the F4. Just can't just devise that huge price. Yeah, I think it's just way too intense. All right, I think I think we're caught up, Danny. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Awesome. So again, guys, next week's live show is gonna be on Danny's channel, but unfortunately, I won't be able to join because I will be in route to Paris, France. Sounds involved. Did we freeze? Did we freeze? We're good. No, you froze. You didn't move. <laughs> I know, cause like, cause I froze because like I saw. I thought you froze. Oh snap! My bad. All right. <laughs> well, okay. So yeah. So next Monday we'll be on Danny's channel. Danny will have something uh, cooked up for you guys, and probably the following Monday uh, it will also be on Danny's channel because I will probably be shooting a wedding, or maybe I'll be sleeping and preparing for a wedding. So I don't know. So. There's two Mondays without me, guys. I know. I know some of you guys. I mean, we could just do the show early. I mean, we or that like too. A, yeah, a I'm, twenty. I'm, like, if we can just do like a short show. I mean, it doesn't have to be a long show. We could do a short show. So I'm, I'm down. We could definitely. I mean, it just sucks they they won't get the live stream, but they can always watch the replay. So, yeah. thought. One of us. All right, that's gonna that's gonna do it, I guess. Yeah, Danny. Is, is there anything? Thank you, everybody, for coming over. Uh, once I crack open the Mavic Pro, I'll try to use it at some point. <laughs> I, I don't want to go through the setup process, but we'll, we'll get through it. And for those of you guys who follow me oh. on Instagram, you guys are dope. You even got some uh, Twitter following, too. Awesome. So uh, while, I'll, while I'm out in France and San Francisco shooting those weddings, tune into the Instagram stories for some BTS and 
That's it on my end. You good, Danny? That'll do it. Thanks, All everybody. Right, Thanks for watching. We'll see Danny. We'll see you next week. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.